I have my loom, I have my yarn, I have my pick, I have my scissors, I have my darning needle, I have buttons and embellishments, and I have regular sewing thread and a sewing needle to sew on the buttons and embellishments. So let's get started. Now I do recommend the chunky yarn, a fat yarn, a thick yarn, because if the yarn you use to make your pouch is too thin, it's gonna give your pouch kind of a lacy look, which might be a nice look, but depending on what you might want to put in your pouch, things might fall through the holes. Plus, people might be able to see what's inside your pouch. So I suggest using a chunky, a thick, a fat yarn. If you don't have a chunky yarn or a fat or thick yarn, then I would suggest combining two yarns together to make um, a chunky yarn and work with it as if it were one yarn. So we're going to start like we always do with a loop. Now, if any of you watched or remember the last tutorial, which was about the washcloths, the dish towels, then we're going to be starting the very same way. We are going to cast on with the a row of e-wrap stitches. We need an extra long tail on our loop and we're going to do one row of knit, one row of purl, one row of knit for a little ways until we get to the point where we are ready to cast off our pouch. So I'm going to go ahead and make a loop with an extra long tail. Make your tail at least about 10 inches long and I'm going to put my yarn here so it doesn't run away. I'm going to put the loop around the anchor peg. I'm going to tighten it up and I'm going to take that extra long tail and put it right behind the anchor peg, drop it right inside the loom. And we're going to hold on to it while we get started. And then we're going to do an E-wrap. Now, let me tell you about the sizing. What I'm going to demonstrate for you is how to make, we're going to do a pouch that's six inches wide. Now, the way I've been getting my measurements for my pouches has nothing whatsoever to do with real math or real science, but so far it has worked for me. What I do when I'm using the chunky yarn, of course, is let's say I'm going to do a pouch today that's six inches wide. So I'm going to use six pegs a peg for each inch, and then I'm going to double it and add one. So for a six inch pouch, for instance, it's going to be double that. So we're going to do 12 pegs plus one. So we're going to be working with 13 pegs today. So if you were making a pouch that was eight inches wide, then you would use 16, 17 pegs. Double the eight, you'd have 16, then add one. Okay. I don't know why it works, but it does. And so I'm sticking to it. So right now we want to e-wrap 13 pegs in order to make a six inch wide pouch. And I have no idea how many pegs I've done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. Okay, and then we're going to push them down a little bit because we want to go back the other way so that we can get our first row of the E-wrap knit stitch. And so we're going to go back the other way, wrapping all the pegs. Now, if you're very, very, very new to loom knitting, I do have a video called Loom Knitting for Beginners that takes you through the process very slowly so that you can understand exactly what's going on. Now we're going to take our bottom row and pull it up over the top. We're going to do this all the way for every peg here. For every peg, we're going to go up and over until we do all 13. And once we've done the 13, it's going to be time to do a row of pearls. Okay, so we've finished the knit row. And now we're going to go to the pearl. But before we do, we're going to take the tail yarn off of the anchor peg and we're going to pull the loop out. Okay, and now we're going to take that working yarn and the 
tail together and we're going to work with them as if they are one yarn. We're going to go to the outside of that first peg because we want to purl and then we're just going to, as we do in purl, go underneath, scooch over and up and we have the loops, only we have two because we have the tail yarn in as well and we're going to take it off and put the two loops on and we're going to do this all around and so we're going to work with that tail yarn in there until the tail yarn runs out until we can't make another loop on the peg and then we're just going to go back to using our working yarn alone as we would normally do so we're going to keep going here so what we are doing is we're working in that tail yarn that beginning yarn so that when the project is finished we don't have to worry about working that yarn in or hiding the strings. We're doing that right now from the beginning. Okay, so now here's my tail yarn. I'm going to go ahead and push it back inside and just continue to work with my working yarn now. So tail yarn's inside. So now we're just going to finish with the working yarn as we would normally do. And so we're doing the pearls and so of course the pearl is in over and we scooch up and then we go in over scooch up and so we're going to go ahead and purl this and i'll probably just stay with you a few um more rows for people who may be new or haven't seen those other uh, tutorials. So we're going to purl here, scooch up, and purl again. So we're just going to purl all across. So it's back and forward, back and forward. Now here's something interesting. Um, the red pouch that I showed you earlier with the little ladybug on it that was done completely and only with one stitch that was just the knit stitch all the way now i know we've talked about how when you just use that one knit stitch your items tend to curl up on you and i know i've called my scarf the sausage scarf and someone the other day told me they used to make scarves that were snakes <laughs> and but the deal is, when you're making the pouch, you're gonna be stitching up the sides. Okay, so let me just say for those people who, okay, so we're using these two, the, the tail yarn and the working yarn as if they were one. So we're just gonna keep using, working them as if they were one. So we're gonna take both of them and lift them up over the top. And that's how we're knitting these in. And then now we're back where there's just working yarn and we're just gonna lift up as normal. So, yes, yeah, so even if you only know how to do one stitch, you can make a pouch, and it'll be a real pretty pouch too. Okay, so now it's time for us to purl again. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna purl, and purl a row, knit a row, purl a row, knit a row. And so right now, I think, um, I'm going to go away. I'm going to just finish out this row again, start the next row for anybody that may be new to the channel or you haven't seen the other videos, you didn't see the dishwash, the washcloth uh, video. So we're going to, I'm just going to go ahead and hang out with you for a little while and make sure you have a good start. Wow, I'm not really good at purling today. My that my yarn is not purling with me. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So I'm gonna do this row and then I'll probably start the next row of, with the E-wrap. And then I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna come back after I've done mm, maybe five or six inches, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead right now and purl and I'm going to purl these four, and then I'm going to grab through the 
Erat. Boy. <laughs> My pearly. Come on. Scooch up. Okay. Thank you. All right. So. And there. All right. And there. And there. Okay. So I'm going to. So we did a row of pearl. And now our next row is going to be a knit row. So we're going to e-wrap so that we have two loops on each peg. And I'm just going to do a few of these. And then I'm going to go away. And I'm going to come back when I have about, I'm going to say, five or six inches. Okay? So I'll see you. See you in five or six inches. <laughs> okay, I have I have a little more than five inches, maybe six if you stretch it, but just over five inches right here. Let me show you what we're going for. Now, this is extra long. This is not what we're going to do today. We're today we're going to make a six inch square pouch. This pouch is a pouch that I'm making for my cell phone. So I wanted it extra long. And the idea is we're going to make our pouch and then fold it over the, the height that we wanted. And then we have a little flap that'll come over and that flap will have a little loop in order to go over a button. And so this is what we're going for. This one is more oblong than what we're knitting right now. What we're knitting right now is a six inch square, but I wanted you to see how it all comes together. So even though we're gonna have six inches, we need for the six inch square, we're gonna need six inches and then another six inches to fold it over. And then we're going to want not this much, but we want two inches to come over and be the flap. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to keep going. And the idea is that I'm going to um, do six inches and then another six inches. That's going to be the front and the back. And then we want to add another two inches for the flap. So we're going to keep going until we have 12, 14 inches. When we have 14 inches, we're going to be ready to bind off and put our pouch together. So I'm gonna keep going until I have 14 inches. Okay, where did I? Our project is just at 13. If we stretch it a little bit, it's 14. So we're gonna stop right here and we are going to bind off or cast off however you want to say it. And then we're going to put our pouch together. Now the fun is just beginning. One new stitch that, well, it's a new stitch to this channel is called Knit Two Together. And it is just like it sounds. We're going to be knitting two stitches together. And the reason why we're going to be doing that is because we're going to be decreasing each row as we go now. So where you are in your project, we're not going to be knitting and purling anymore. We're only going to be knitting. So do your last row, wherever you are, do your last row so that the next row you should be doing is a knit row. So have your yarn in position that you would be ready to wrap. So you want to have it ready for where you would be if you were doing a knit row. All the rows from here on out are going to be knits and we're going to decrease. I'm going to show you a, an example of what we're going for. Uh, this pouch right here, we decreased. Every row got shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter until finally we only had one loop on the loom. The whole loom only had one loop. So that's what we're going to do. And what that does is that gives you that little triangular shape which makes your pouch just a little bit more special. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to decrease these, these uh, the stitches that we have, decrease the loops. So we want to keep it even. So every time I decrease a loop over here, 
I'm going to decrease over here. And so we're going to start over here. Remember, you want your yarn in a position so that you're ready to do the next row as a knit. So, all right, so your yarn should be ready to do some wraps. All right, now, so I think I can do this with my fingers to start with. As we go, it may get a little tighter, but I'm going to take this last loop here and I want to decrease these loops. So I'm just going to take this one off and put it on that peg. Then I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to get this loop and I'm going to put it on that peg. Now, instead of 13 pegs, we're dealing with 11 pegs. And so now we're going to take our yarn. We're going to wrap as if we were doing just our regular knit. And these are all going to be knit rows at the end. And it's going to give a real pretty effect. So you just want to knit and wrap, wrap, wrap. And then you're going to take your pick and you're going to pull over, counting those two um, loops. The one that you moved over on top of the other one and the one that was already there, we count that as one. We treat them as one. So here we are getting to... All right, so these are the two. That's the one we moved on top of this one. So we're going to treat that as one and go up and over. Now, you know what we're going to do? <laughs> we're going to move this one in to here. Okay, so now to keep it even, got to go to the other side. And I'm going to move this one on top of this one. All right. So there you go, even less pegs with yarn on them. So we're going to, remember we're not going to purl now, we're just going to knit all the way. So we're going to wrap as we would normally do to do a row of e-wrap knit stitches. And of course we're going to treat those two as one, pull them up and over, 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 up and over. And so we got these two here, up and over. Okay, so I think you know what we're going to do now. We're going to, I'm going to use my pick. Sometimes it gets a little, oh, it's okay. Pick to move that one over here. So now we have moved that to there. So we got to go to the other end. And we're going to move this one on top of this one. All right. And then we're going to wrap because we're only knitting now. And where's my yarn? Wrap and wrap. Okay. And we're going to up and over and over over, 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 and these two are one and over. All right. Okay. I think you know the drill now. We're going to take this loop and we're going to move it on top of this one. And so we're going to go over here. We're going to take this one and move it on top of this one. And now we're going to wrap for our knit stitch and these two are one. So up and over and up and over, 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 these two are one and over. Wow. Okay. Now, now what are we going to do? We're going to take this one and move it on top of this one. We're just going to keep going in until eventually we don't have any loops left at all. Okay, so now we've got that. We're going to still do our wrap, 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 and we're going to knit these two over, this one over, and this one over. It should have been two. Okay, that was two over. Okay, now 
we're going to move it in on top of this one and then we're going to move this on top of this one and now we're still going to wrap it <laughs> and we are going to move each one one at a time it's just easier that way but we're going to do all three of these over like that and now we're going to take this little loop and we're going to pull it and take this off pattern here and we decreased it made the little triangle and here we have the loop that we're going to use um as that to help with the closure we're going to make sure, measure a button or an embellishment that this will fit around and we're not going to do anything with that right now your pouch is going to look something similar to this when it's all finished like that i think that's very pretty all right so the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to cut this string but we're going to keep it really long so we have a really long length um yarn and we don't want anything to happen to that loop right now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to decide how high the position that we want our our pouch to be do we want it down low we want it high and then we're going to turn it inside out and we're going to play around with that and even though this is the, the wrong side we're going to see just where where that closure would be and this is where you get to decide if you want it higher or lower so I'm gonna say we're gonna go with right here and so in order to keep that in place we're gonna take some actually some straight pins or if you have clips but I think straight pins are gonna work better and you're just gonna kind of hold it in place so that it doesn't shift around because what we're going to do is take our darning needle and we're going to stitch up the sides now remember we're doing this from inside out so that when we turn it back the other way we won't see any of the stitches so that looks pretty good let's go ahead and stitch so darning needle and we want there's some yarn that's already cut Ooh. okay so darning needle and we're going to thread the darning needle with the yarn that matches okay and we're gonna make it fairly long. now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch up each side now the way you stitch it up is up to you if you know any stitches you can do a whip stitch which is going to make it a little thicker or i'm just going to start with and I'm gonna leave a long tail on this because, so that I can come back and weave it in and or tie it off later. So you wanna leave a little tail when you start to stitch up the sides of your pouch. Now the way that I'm going to do it, okay, I'm gonna start with a whip stitch. A whip stitch is where you're gonna just go around, 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 in and out, in and out. So I'm gonna start with that stitch, but I basically just like a regular running stitch a regular what would be you might a regular sewing stitch and that way the seams are not too bulky and you're just gonna keep it to the kind of the edge about a quarter of an inch in and go in and out in and out and keep that tail there we might need that later and we're just doing i'm just doing what i call a regular sewing running stitch now you can gather a lot of things and pull it through together or if you're kind of new at sewing you can just do like one at a time and just take your time there's no rush for anything and you can just go in and out like that and in and out like that and in and out like that okay so when we're going to do this you can move the pins the pins are just really to kind of keep it from sliding when you start your your sewing and we're going to just go all the way up you need to come all the way to the top of where this piece is you want to make sure that's tacked down oh my hands in the way you want to make sure that part is tacked down you don't want it 
to be open like that. You want this all the way to the top. So we're going to go all the way to the top. And when we get there, we are going to tack it in place and we're going to tack it using the whip stitch. Okay, so the whip stitch is a stitch that goes around and see how it kind of just on the outside, it makes it, hugs everything in place. And then we're going to just weave this back in by going back down um, the out, kind of the outside. You don't want to go, you don't want it to show when you turn it inside out. But we're going to just kind of weave it in back down here a little ways. Now this is the inside, so you're not going to see this part when the when your pouch is all finished. So we just pull that through and I'm just gonna take it all the way and I'm gonna tie it to this yarn down here. And we're just weaving it in lightly. We're not trying to go through and we're gonna take it out by where that yarn was and and now we're just going to tie it untie it okay and again just we'll leave those things for now we're going to weave them in later all right because we're going to do the other side right now and we need some Are you ready? Let's turn it inside out and see how it looks. Okay. And be sure to push your corners out. And wow. Okay, there's our pouch. Okay. There's the pouch. Make sure the corners are pushed as best they can on the inside. And Here's the back. Here's the front. All right, now we have this little flap right here. And you're gonna take a button. Which button should I use? Maybe we'll maybe we'll do this, huh? That's kind of that's kind of what they call funky. Is that funky? <laughs> well, we have this one. This one is it's a nice button. Maybe that will work too. Maybe, well, that one would work really good too. You know, maybe we'll just go with this one. Yeah. Okay, so what you're going to do with your loop is you're going to put the button inside and you're going to draw up the loop just so that it can, um, just enough so that that button can fit in there. And then remembering that size, you're going to take the darning needle again and we're going to okay so now we know what size we want our loop to be if it's going to fit this button so we're going to let the button go for now and what we're going to do is just tack this loop in place and so we'll find some little loops under here. Again, you want to keep it on the back and on the inside. And you want to hold that loop because you don't want it to shrink up too small for the button that you've chosen. And then we're going to just do this again. And all right. And so now that's pretty solid. It's not going to move. And but I want to do it just one more time. And then, okay, and so now we're going to 
just kind of hide this yarn somewhere on the inside. We don't want it to go through to the outside, just on the inside. Come on. Come on, just stay on the inside because you don't want it to show on the outside. And okay, so all right, and we're going to pull this because we want it to be buried in there. Okay, so now we have our button loop, and this is our pouch. And we're going to, this is the button that we had measured. So we're going to see where that flap is. And we're going to put a pin there to let us know where we need to sew this button. So I'm going to put a pin right here. And this is where we're going to sew the button. Right here. Of course, straight. Of course, straighter. And so that's our, and so for, to sew the button, we're going to need regular sewing thread and a regular sewing needle. Now this one, okay, it's already threaded for this needle. Um, yeah, I don't know if it helps. It's going to help to make a knot. Let's see if it does. Let's see if we make a little knot in it. Will that help us? All right, so we're going to go on the inside. Okay, can you see what I'm doing? I'm going to go on the inside and you're going to put the hole, the needle, through one of those holes. And all you're going to do is go back and forth, back and forth. So try to hold it in the middle. Okay, and go back in and try to keep it as straight as you can. And, and in, and you're just going to go. Um, in and out those two holes and put our button in place okay and in I'm gonna move the pen now okay so I'm in out and in out in out in okay so we're just going to keep tacking this in the same place until it feels pretty secure and then when we think we have it secure we're going to go to the back and we're going to just kind of tack it down from the back keeping everything on the inside and behind the button so that none of the strings will show on the outside now your patch uh, your button is done okay so here's your pouch and our loop around there all right <laughs> your loom knitted pouch <laughs>